the rand, exactly seven rand to the US dollar. We saw it hitting 6.96 in yesterday's session. We're starting to see a little bit of uh, money taken off the table when it comes to the local currency. Uh, of course, it all has to do with the dollar weakness that we've been seeing as well. Uh, where to from here for the rand, David? Uh, it seems relatively uh, uncertain now. Hi, Lenny. Yeah, it's all happening this morning. Uh, we started the day with uh, some concerns around Spain and particularly Ireland uh, about credit ratings and potential Moody's downgrade for Spain. Uh, we saw bond yields in the peripheral European countries uh, spiking much higher. And uh, the dollar took some, some heart from that and, and, and actually strengthened quite well. But subsequent to that, we've had some comments out of China around, about, around of the uh, relative strength of the dollar, uh, how, they, how they see that the dollar could weaken. They've made some comments about how they're very happy with the way Europe has tackled the debt crisis in Europe. And subsequent to that, we've seen the dollar come under some heavy pressure. And the RAND moved down on the back of that from about 7.05 early this morning down to the current levels of just above 7. Mm. Well, we keep hearing about the currency wars that are ensuing. The Brazilian finance minister talking about this in yesterday's session. And we talk about trade wars as well between the U.S. and China. And all of this is now prompting most investors to head into emerging market currencies. Uh, most uh, emerging markets are complaining about the fact that we've seen such immense strength coming through. Uh, where to from here, though, David? Give us uh, your peg uh, for the RAND this week. Well, I think uh, it's certainly the G4, uh, America, Britain, the Europe and Japan, all, all concerned about uh, uh, strong currencies, although the dollar has weakened more recently. Uh, and uh, the developed world really trying to uh, inflate their way out of trouble. Uh, and of course, that has impacts for the currency market. And, and, and where we see uh, all the money flowing to is into emerging markets, high yielders, commodity type currencies, simply because, uh, you know, the, the, the prospects in those, in those countries uh, seem to be a lot better. On top of the yield pickup that you get and a potential uh, strengthening of currencies, you know, it's a very nice return if, uh, if you are able to ride out these sort of mini storms that, that come through. On a technical level, Eleni, I think uh, 698 is very, very important for the RAND. We, we've, we've traded marginally below that uh, recently, but we haven't managed to close below that level. Uh, I think if the dollar continues to weaken the way that it is, yeah. uh, we may see an attack on 698. If we break that level and close below it, then I think we're heading towards 685. Well, David, you know, you, you said that the euro is starting to recoup some ground purely because of some comments that we saw coming through from Chinese officials. Standard & Poor's warning that it may cut Ireland's credit rating. Uh, and it seems it's going to be pretty much a play between the US dollar and the European Union and who's really starting to cope with the fiscal situation better. There's also talk of quantitative easing as well that has come into the the mix well you know Europe started dealing with the with the fiscal problems uh, some months ago uh, austerity measures in all the, the so-called pigs and, and, and the peripheral European countries while America has continued to inflate uh, the Fed continues to inflate their balance sheet and, and has threatened to do more of that uh, you know the, 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 the fiscus in America keeps uh, the deficit keeps growing uh, and as America tries to again inflate their way out of trouble so it, it, it does seem at the moment is as if, if the focus is really on the dollar on the back of potential quantitative easing coming out of the Fed and the budget deficit that 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 will continue to create problems for America and it's very very uh, it, it's potentially uh, possible that the dollar weakens quite substantially from here which of course may have uh, serious implications for the rand mm. um, you know David also just uh, keeping in mind that the gold price has now started to drift very far away from one thousand three hundred dollars an ounce uh, seeing at one thousand two hundred and eighty nine dollars an ounce uh, a lot of people were talking about a bubble coming to the for when it came to the yellow metal. Would you agree? Do you think that we're starting to see a softer gold price uh, from here onwards, or do you think it's just basically a blip in a very strong bull market? I don't think we're seeing a bubble at all in any. If, if, if everybody's complaining about their currencies, trying to devalue their currencies, uh, talking, you know, trying to inflate their way out of trouble, uh, the, the, the remaining sort of safe haven, particularly when bond yields in the developed world are already so low, the remaining safe haven is gold. Uh, and I think gold will be supported for some time to come while these, uh, while these debates are, are carrying on or trade uh, or currency wars, as some would like to call it, I think gold has still got some room to move to the upside. Mm. Uh, where do you see it, though, David? Um, to the upside, some are saying 1,300 is going to be the level that we're going to see for the rest of the year. 
Yeah, I think on an average basis, you know, for the entire year, probably 1,300 is is uh, is uh, a, a good call on an on an average basis. But I wouldn't be surprised to see gold heading up towards 14, perhaps 1,500 in the next few months. Simply on the back of all the uncertainty that is taking place in the currency markets, uh, gold remains the the, the the sort of one remaining safe haven where you can put your money, and it costs you almost nothing to carry that that position. Uh, and while while everybody sorts their problems out. Mm. We had economic data out yesterday and we're expecting a flurry of economic data this week. We had the leading indicator uh, showing that things in South Africa are looking slightly better. CPI and PPI set to be released later on this week. Is this going to be market moving, David? Because I think pretty much priced in for now. Well, I think the RAND's reacting more, much more to international events uh, at the moment, Eleni. The, the South African economy, uh, besides unemployment, which is a massive, massive problem, of course, and, and, and deserves a lot of attention, the, 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 the economy is, is, is kind of chugging along at this point in time, and it's just lending some support to the RAND bulls. Uh, but I do think we're reacting much more to international factors because those are really, really important for the future, and we'll keep an eye on, on, on those factors and to see how the currency wars, the so-called currency wars, yeah. do play themselves out. <laughs> um, okay, David, also looking at the bond markets and the flows that we've been seeing when we spoke uh, late last week and of course that was ahead of the public holiday and of course the NGC meeting that came to the fore um, as well. We saw foreigners being net sellers of bonds. This has now been reversed and we're seeing strong flows coming through into the bond market. Do you expect this to maintain uh, this kind of momentum uh, for the next few months? I think uh, certainly pre the, the, the ANC's National General Council, some money was taken off the table in case there were any major shift in policy over there. Uh, while that has been taking place, global bond yields, developed, bond, developed nations bond yields have been moving lower. And subsequent to that, we have seen a return to the South African bond market, particularly as our own inflation rate does seem rather benign. Uh, and, and, and rates will be on hold here for much longer, perhaps potentially even a cut down the road. Uh, and, and, and our bond market is attracting inflows again. Mm. Uh, David, also just uh, looking at the, the currency war scenario that is playing out. We've spoken about that quite extensively. Uh, the impact that it's going to have on the equity markets, because we've seen a bit of volatility coming to the fore. Yesterday, we basically caught up. We were in positive territory. We started to see a little bit of a slump uh, coming on, on board in today's session. How much of an impact is it going to have on the investor community when it comes to equities? I think it doesn't help, Eleni. You know, it, it creates a whole lot of uncertainty. But an interesting thing, something that we have to remember, bond yields across the world, certainly in the developed nations, are so low that many, many uh, companies in, in those countries are, are now showing dividend yields of much better than what you can get in the bond market. Uh, and that's, that is attracting flows into the equity market. So even as the economy is, is sort of chugging along and, 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 and uh, showing uh, benign signs of growth at least, uh, they will be flowing to the equity market simply because dividend yields are so attractive relative to the bond market. Mm. And David, your thoughts on the, the increase in merger and acquisition and activity on a global level and of course keeping in mind that Walmart is very interested in mass market and there's still a lot of question marks as to how it's going to impact the local currency. Yeah, I, you know, I think those are, those are very interesting factors. If we add up the sort of the, the, the three deals that are on the table in South Africa, well, one of them done, the die data deals uh, almost put to bed already, uh, the potential mass smart deal, and of course, uh, uh, HSBC's potential acquisition of Nedbank, that totals plus, um, you know, greater than $10 billion. Now, it's hard to see or it's difficult to see how much of that flow has been discounted already. Certainly in the case of MassMart, a, a, a huge percentage of that share is already held offshore. But it's more the psychological effect. And, 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 and you know, one of the things that we're thinking here is that the potential FDI flows are really also a, a kind of yield play as the developed nations' economies are, are really just, uh, you know, treading water uh, and, the, and the emerging market economies are doing better. And it becomes some kind of a yield play because the returns in those markets are much better. So I, yeah, I think we'll continue to see that. I think we'll continue, continue to see money flow into emerging markets on the back of FDI. Uh, and, and of course, that will remain supportive for those currencies.